on World News Tonight. Balancing Act. India walks a thin line between disaster and diplomacy as Putin pays a visit. Charges reduced. Possible political pressure shaves off jail time for Aung San Suu Kyi. Pandemic pressure. Countries around the world brace for impact as restrictions and mandates are imposed. Adventures in Wonderland. Thousands of lights used to bring alive creatures from Alice's dreams. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Anuradhi Wickramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. On today's coverage, we start off with the latest tense summit. Russia and India signed a flurry of trade and arms deals during President Vladimir Putin's visit to New Delhi for talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi, including one that will see India produce more than 600,000 Kalashnikov assault rifles. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi welcomed Russian President Vladimir Putin on Monday, signing a slew of deals in trade and defence as India attempts to navigate its relationship with Russia. During the meeting, PM Modi said that agreements would be beneficial across several sectors. Despite the challenges posed by COVID-19, there's no change in the pace of growth of the India and Russia relations. Our special and privileged strategic partnership continues to grow stronger. India's Foreign Secretary said that the two countries signed 28 investment pacts, including agreements in steel, energy, coal and shipbuilding, and stated that India would continue to receive S-400 missiles from Russia. Both Russia and India also signed an agreement to extend their military and technological cooperation for the next decade and a pledge to reach a $30 billion trade target by 2025. We perceive India as a great power, a friendly nation and a time-tested friend. Moscow and New Delhi have a long history of strong relations, but India has recently drawn closer to the US, which it considers critical to countering China, after the two Asian nations suffered deadly clashes along their disputed border in eastern Ladakh. Meanwhile, Russia has expressed concern over the creation of the Quad, a bloc involving the US, Australia, India and Japan, formed in response to China's growing power in the Indo-Pacific region. After previously depending on the former Soviet Union during the Cold War, India has since diversified its purchases of military equipment and ramped up its ties with the US. But Washington has asked its partners to shun Russian military equipment to avoid possible sanctions. A court in military rule Myanmar has halved the prison term for the country's deposed civilian leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, to two years from the earlier four years that had been handed down. She's due in court again next week where she faces additional corruption charges. Myanmar's ousted leader Aung San Suu Kyi's prison term has been reduced to two years, just hours after she had been convicted and sentenced to four years in jail for violating the disaster management law. The country's state media said Monday that the reduction also applies to former President Win Mint, an ally of Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy party. He was convicted on the same charges. It explained the sentences would be applied at their current detention centers, implying they would not be sent to prison. Suu Kyi has been in detention since a military coup in February toppled her elected civilian government, and since then, she's being held in an undisclosed location. The Nobel Peace Prize winner faces more than 10 charges, which include accusations of corruption and violating the Official Secrets Act. In one case, she was convicted of violating COVID-19 restrictions for campaigning during last year's election, where she waved to the public while wearing a mask and face shield. The verdict was widely criticized by the international community, with the UN human rights chief calling it a, quote, sham trial, and said it would only deepen rejection of the coup. Suchi is due in court next on December 14th, when she will face charges of possessing illegal walkie-talkies. She's one of more than 10,000 people that have been arrested by the military junta since seizing power earlier this year. At least 1,300 people have been killed in anti-coup demonstrations, according to the monitoring group Assistance Association for Political Prisoners. 
The United States has announced it will stage a diplomatic boycott of the upcoming Winter Olympics in Beijing over China's egregious rights abuses, a move the Chinese government has said would be met with resolute countermeasures. The White House on Monday said the U.S. will not send government officials to the upcoming Beijing Olympics due to China's human rights atrocities after Beijing pledged unspecified countermeasures against any diplomatic boycott. The Biden administration will not send any diplomatic or official representation to the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics and Paralympic Games given the PRC's ongoing genocide and crimes against uh, humanity in Xinjiang and other human rights abuses. Press Secretary Jen Psaki said the diplomatic boycott sends a clear message but would not prevent American athletes from attending, which she said would penalize athletes who have prepared for years. The athletes on Team USA have our full support. We will be behind them 100 percent as we cheer them on from home. President Joe Biden said last month he was considering a boycott amid criticism of China's human rights record, including what Washington says is genocide against minority Muslims in its western region of Xinjiang. Earlier on Monday, China's foreign ministry called any boycotts by politicians grandstanding. China's embassy in Washington did not respond immediately to a request for comment. State Department spokesperson of the U.S. Ned Price reiterated that President Joe Biden will warn Russian President Vladimir Putin of severe economic consequences should Russia go ahead with an invasion of Ukraine. New satellite images tonight show Russian forces at the ready near the Ukrainian border. U.S. intelligence warn Russia's Vladimir Putin may be planning an attack on the U.S. ally. U.S. and Ukrainian officials estimate there are already 70 to 100,000 Russian troops near the border. An unclassified U.S. intelligence estimate predicts another 100,000 could be called in for a potential invasion early next year. President Biden has signaled to Putin the U.S. will oppose him. I have been in constant contact with our allies in Europe. <laughs> with the Ukrainians. Analysts expect the U.S. would likely confront Russia with sanctions and not a full war on its border. Though in the past, sanctions have done little to change Putin's actions. Fears of war are growing in Ukraine. Tonight, Putin may be bluffing. He does not want Ukraine to join NATO, and he doesn't want NATO to put advanced weapon systems into the country. Perhaps it's just saber-rattling. Either way, the swords are drawn. Top U.S. financial regulators are investigating former President Donald Trump's $1.25 billion deal to float his new social media venture. Shares of companies linked to Donald Trump's new social media venture got an early boost on Monday on the news that nearly $1 billion in investments had been raised. But those early gains quickly fizzled after the firm planning to take Trump's company public disclosed that the SEC and the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, or FINRA, have been sniffing around on a fact-finding mission. Digital World Acquisition Corp., which is merging with Trump Media and Technology Group and plans to take it public, said that both financial regulatory commissions had sought documents relating to communications between the two companies, board meetings, trading procedures, and the identities of certain investors, among other items. And FINRA specifically asked for a review of trading that preceded the announcement of the two companies merging. Trump Media inked its deal with Digital World to go public in October. Trump supporters and day traders snapped up the stock, valuing the company as of Friday at almost $4 billion. But some Wall Street investors are reluctant to associate with Trump. After the January 6th attack by his supporters on the U.S. Capitol, Trump was banned from top social media platforms amid concerns he would inspire further violence. In the first public set of projections since the announcement of the merger, Digital World Acquisition said it expects one facet of Trump's company, a social media app called Truth Social, to have 81 million total users by 2026. Twitter, by comparison, has over 200 million daily active users, and Facebook is approaching 2 billion. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side.
Welcome back. On the COVID updates around the globe now. New York City declared that all private sector employers must implement COVID-19 vaccine mandates for their workers as the highly transmissible Omicron variant has spread to at least one third of U.S. states. Tonight with Omicron now discovered in nearly 20 states, the mayor of New York City is implementing the nation's most sweeping vaccine mandate for all private employers. By the end of this month, those who work in person must have at least one dose of a vaccine unless they qualify for an exemption. With new testing restrictions also implemented today for all travelers entering the U.S., our nation is bracing for Omicron, but already facing a disaster set into motion by Delta. I used to wake up crying because I thought I was going to die. Like 99% of those infected with the virus, Vera Martinez Ruiz, who isn't vaccinated, likely has Delta. I never thought it would get me, and it got me. And it's really scary. Martinez Ruiz is lucky to be alive and just as fortunate to have a hospital bed. At the San Juan Regional Medical Center in Farmington, New Mexico, the ICU is over 200% capacity. More than half the patients in the building have COVID. In need of a lifeline, this rural hospital is now getting help. An HHS National Disaster Medical Team has been deployed to assist overwhelmed staff. Typically used on the front lines of natural disasters, they're now needed for a growing crisis inside hospitals. That is most true here in the ICU where cameras have never been allowed before. Authorities want the public to see how dire the situation is. The grim reality of Delta is often overlooked, and for the sickest, the writing is on the wall. Scribbled on far too many doors here reads the words anointed by Father Tim. Patients who've been given their last rites because the end may be near. France will close nightclubs and tighten social distancing measures ahead of Christmas. But Prime Minister Jean Castex said there is no need for new lockdowns or curfews in response to the emergent Omicron variant of the coronavirus. For more on this, we have other there in the world. Your special correspondent Chetana Dharmaratna reporting now from Normandy in France. Chetana? Yes, Anurali. Castex said a fifth wave of pandemic was now surging through the country. But he said that with the 52 million people now vaccinated, the situation is better than in previous outbreaks and there is no need for drastic measures to save Christmas. From Friday, nightclubs will be shut for four weeks and the government also called on citizens to voluntarily limit private and professional gatherings, such as Christmas parties. Health Minister Oliver Warren said the combination of vaccination booster shots and more rigorous social distancing would allow France to avoid renewed lockdowns currently being imposed in several European countries. From December 15th, children aged 5 to 11 who are overweight or who have serious health conditions will be offered access to vaccination. Children over the age of 12 can already be inoculated. Verne said France would get its first deliveries of Pfizer COVID vaccine for children from December 13th and that he hoped vaccinations would be available to all children from December 20th. Back to you on Robbie. All right, thank you. That was other than the World News Special Correspondent Chetana Dharmaratna reporting from Normandy in France. People in Italy unvaccinated against COVID-19 can no longer go to the theatre, cinemas, live music venues or major sporting events under new rules that came into force. Without it, the unvaccinated will be barred from cinemas, theatres, indoor seating in restaurants and bars and several other recreational venues. From Monday, the so-called Super Health Pass takes effect in Italy. Only people who are vaccinated or who have recently recovered from coronavirus will have access to it. Residents are divided over the new measure. It's a step up from the Green Pass which was introduced last August. With it, people who provided proof of a negative test could take part in social activities, but this new superpass takes away that option. From now on, public transport will also be off limits without a normal green pass. Before, this was only the case on long-distance trains and domestic flights. The tightening of restrictions come as infections across Europe hit record numbers, while Italy is faring better than many of its neighbours, with 15,000 cases reported on Sunday, the country has still seen a steady rise in infections.
Authorities are hoping the booster shot campaign, which is now in full swing in the country, will keep cases down. Nearly 85% of over 12s have been vaccinated. Jabs for younger children will be made available later this month. One of the creators of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine said future pandemics could be even more lethal than COVID-19. So the lessons learned from the outbreak must not be squandered and the world should ensure it is prepared for the next viral onslaught. The spread of the Omicron variant is fueling fears of yet another global surge in coronavirus cases. As health officials and pharmaceutical firms race to develop targeted vaccines and COVID-19 treatments, at least one vaccine expert warned this pandemic would not be the last. This will not be the last time a virus threatens our lives and our livelihoods. Sarah Gilbert, one of the creators of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, told an audience at Oxford University on Monday that nations must make an enduring commitment to pandemic preparedness. And I'd like to finish on a high note, but the truth is the next one could be worse. It could be more contagious or more lethal or both. We cannot allow a situation where we have gone through all we have gone through and then find that the enormous economic losses we have sustained mean that there is still no funding for pandemic preparedness. The advances we have made and the knowledge we have gained must not be lost. The novel coronavirus has killed 5.26 million people across the world, according to Johns Hopkins University. Closures and health restrictions wiped out trillions of dollars in economic output and turned life upside down for billions of people. Gilbert, a professor of vaccinology at the University of Oxford, said that amid the battle against this pandemic, the world should not lose sight of the threat posed by the next one. Just as we invest in armed forces and intelligence and diplomacy to defend against wars, we must invest in people, research, manufacturing and institutions to defend against pandemics. Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Samsung Electronics said it will merge its mobile and consumer electronics divisions and named new co-CEOs in its biggest reshuffle since 2017 to simplify its structure and focus on growing its logic chip business. Japanese billionaire Yusaku Maezawa said he could barely contain his excitement a day ahead of blasting off to the International Space Station in a prelude to a more ambitious trip around the moon with Elon Musk's SpaceX planned in 2023. Indonesian president promised to bolster evacuation efforts and repair damaged homes after visiting the Mount Sumeru disaster zone following the devastating volcanic eruption. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said the country's military education system must redouble efforts to turn out officers who remain absolutely loyal to the country's ruling party. Panamanian Security Minister Juan Pino announced the successful dismantling of two drug trafficking cells belonging to the Gulf clan. An indestructible black box will be built in 2022 to hold the world accountable for the Earth's future by recording humanity's handling of the climate change crisis. The U.S. securities regulator has opened an investigation into Tesla over a whistleblower complaint that the company failed to properly notify its shareholders and the public of fire risks associated with solar panel system defects. Tesla is the subject of an investigation by the Securities and Exchange Commission tied to a whistleblower complaint about the possible risk of fire associated with solar panel system defects Reuters has learned exclusively. This investigation adds to a list of regulatory headaches for the world's most valuable auto company, which includes a federal safety probe into accidents involving its driver assistance systems. Concerns about fires from Tesla solar systems have been published previously, but this is the first report of investigation by the securities regulator. The SEC disclosed the Tesla probe in response to a Freedom of Information Act request by Stephen Henkes, a former Tesla field quality manager who filed a whistleblower complaint on the solar systems in 2019 and asked the agency for information about the report. In the SEC complaint, Henkes accused Tesla and SolarCity, which it acquired in 2016, of not disclosing before or after the acquisition a, quote, liability and exposure to property damage, risk of injury of users, fire, etc. to shareholders. He also told the SEC that Tesla failed to notify its customers or regulators that defective electrical connectors could lead to fires. 
Henkes was fired from Tesla in August 2020, and he sued Tesla, claiming the dismissal was in retaliation for raising safety concerns. Tesla did not respond to Reuters' emailed questions, while the SEC declined to comment. Litigation and concerns over faulty connectors and Tesla solar system issues stretch back several years. Walmart, in a 2019 lawsuit that was eventually settled, blamed Tesla's solar system for seven store fires. Several residential customers or their insurers have sued Tesla and parts supplier Amphenol over fires related to their solar systems, according to documents provided by legal transparency group Plainsight. Shares of Tesla fell in midday Monday trading. And finally tonight, a cast of giant characters from Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland went on display in an annual light show at the Antwerp Zoo in Belgium. The zoo said 18,000 lights were used to bring alive more than 200 figures, including a 6-meter-high version of the eponymous heroine, the Cheshire Cat and the White Rabbit. The Mad Hatter presides over a six-meter-long table topped with spinning teacups with a soundtrack of ethereal music. Most of the installations, built from cloth, stretched over steel frames, were made in China. Opening night was reserved for zoo staff and their families, who were an easy public to win over. People appreciated the display, saying it meant something special, especially with the spreading pandemic causing everything to start closing again. In case you have missed any of the stories we aired tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash other there in English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Suzanne Shanali will join you again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Anradhi Vikramasinghe. Until then, stay safe and have a great night.